Praise the Lord and greetings to our brothers and sisters in Christ. Once again, this is Pastor Smith, and we come to you this evening with our Sunday School lesson for today from the Greater Atlanta Healing Temple Church, located right here at 1332 Holcomb Avenue in the city of East Point, Georgia. Once again, we thank God for each of you and thank you for joining us today. At this time, we will begin with a word of prayer. Almighty God, who has so graciously spared our lives and brought us together to study your word once again, we pray the blessings of Almighty God, then the peace of God be upon our listeners, our viewers, that you open our understanding that we may rightfully divide your word and that the hearers thereof will be benefited and you will get the glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen and thank God. Once again, this is the Greater Atlanta Healing Temple Sunday School Session and we thank you for joining us today. Our lesson for today is entitled, Proofs of the Resurrection. Proofs of the Resurrection. And it comes from one of the four gospels St. Luke chapter 24, verses 36 through 53. Again, our lesson today comes from the book of St. Luke chapter 24, verses 36 through 53. Our topic once again is proofs of the resurrection. This is a, a big long-standing question in the minds of many people throughout the years, did Christ really die and rise again? And we have biblical proof that yes, Jesus actually rose from the dead to die no more. And because he lives, you and I can live and we can have the abundant life through Jesus Christ. Our uh, reading for today, and as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit has not flesh and bones as you see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wonder, he said unto them, Have you here any meat? And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and of an honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you that all things might be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scripture and said unto them, thus it is written and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. 
And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. Praise God. And again, our topic for today is proof of the resurrection. Amen. The many people still to this day question whether Jesus actually went in the grave, was placed in the grave, and actually resurrected or came back to life. Amen. But we have Bible proof, Bible witnesses that he in fact did. So in our lesson opened today in the 24th chapter of the book of uh, Luke, what had happened in the morning of this very day, the same day in the morning, first day of the week, Jesus had risen from the grave. The uh, sisters, Mary, had gone to the tomb. He was not in the tomb. Amen. But he was resurrected and was no longer dead. All right. So, and we read last Sunday that uh, Mary uh, went and told the disciples they did not believe, but two of them, Peter and John, ran to the tomb to find out just to see if they, what they were saying was actually true. Amen. So we have... Uh, after Jesus' resurrection, we had Mary Magdalene, which is found in the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 9, was one of the first to arrive at the tomb and discover that it was empty, that Jesus had risen. And so she went in, they went and told the disciples, Peter and John, of course, uh, we followed the story. They went to the tomb and found out that what Mary had said was true. Jesus' body was no longer in the tomb. All right. So later on that day, two of the other disciples and followers of Jesus was walking to the town of Emmaus, which is a little uh, bit out from Jerusalem. So they were walking to Emmaus. The Bible tells us in, uh, uh, we read in Luke, if we read up above where our lesson began, that those two disciples were walking on the road. One of them was Cleopas, plus another disciple. So two of the disciples realized that Jesus is no longer in the grave. They were walking on the road to the town of Emmaus, discussing what had happened, basically that Jesus had been crucified, that he had been buried and placed in the tomb. And then after that, they've gotten the news that Jesus is no longer in the tomb. So these two disciples are walking along the road up discussing this event among themselves, the two of them. Amen. And if we read in our lesson that Above, before our lesson begins today, what had happened when these two disciples were so uh, engaged in their discussion, Jesus himself, them not knowing who Jesus was, he happened to be walking along and heard their conversation, and he joins up with them and asks them, basically, what are you talking about? And they begin to tell him, said, if you have been in uh, in the in the city and you're his disciple, follower of Jesus, and you don't know what's happening. And they began to relate that how he was killed, how he was buried, and how that uh, this morning they were discovered that he was no longer there. So Jesus is listening to Cleopas and the other disciple discuss him. And the thing that is interesting, they did not know that the man they were talking about, Jesus being risen and missing from the grave, was actually walking along with them, and they are talking with him because the Bible said their eyes were holding from him. 
In other words, they were, their eyes were uh, blinded in such a way that they knew they were talking to somebody, but they did not at this point realize that they in fact were talking with Jesus, the man who they were discussing. And if you read uh, just before coming up to our lesson for the day, Jesus was walking along and they were talking to him. And when they got to where they were going, Jesus uh, kept walking a little like he was passing on by. And they told him, said, well, look, it's late in the evening. Why don't you just stay with us tonight? And Jesus obliged them and he stayed with them. And in fact, he ate with them. And in that process of time, they discovered that, hey, this is Jesus that has risen from the dead. So our topic is proof of the resurrection. So here you've got uh, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary that went to the tomb early. They realized that he's not even in the grave anymore. And then you run into Peter and John who also come to verify Mary's report and they find out he is no longer in the grave. And then Jesus ran into two of his disciples talking about him along the road to Emmaus. And then later on, he lets them know that I am Jesus. He actually sat down and ate with them. And then they realize that Jesus is alive. And they go and tell the other disciples who were still waiting, no doubt in hiding for fear of what was going to happen to the rest of Jesus' followers. So that brings us to today's lesson. After they had told the disciples, and I imagine they still were in disbelief, the 11 disciples grouped together there. And while they were there, wondering now what's going on for real, Jesus himself, in verse 36, said, and as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Can you imagine in your mind, can we imagine in our human mind, what the scene must have looked like when these 11 disciples already knew that Jesus, their master, had been crucified and buried. And here, all of a sudden, without any warning, he appears in the room with them. I do not read in the Bible anywhere where anybody got up to open the door, where it, there was anybody knocking on the door. I don't read where Jesus came through the window. But it said he appeared in their midst. And I guess him knowing that they were fearful, he said unto them, peace be unto you. In other words, it's all right. Calm yourself. Everything is okay. But verse 37 said, but they were terrified and affrighted because they assumed they had seen a big ghost. Amen. And sometimes when the Lord comes, appears to us, and his presence is so great, so awesome, out of the ordinary, that it just wows us off our feet. So here are the disciples knowing that Jesus had been crucified. And now here he is appearing right before them in their presence. So he asked them a question. All right, I'm standing here. Why are you so shocked? Why are you so afraid? What are the thoughts that's in your heart? He said, if you don't believe it, look at my hands. Look at my feet, because a ghost don't appear in front of you in a bodily form like I am doing. And he said, don't only just look at me, handle me. In other words, touch, feel for yourself that the nails 
holes that were in my hand. Feel me. Look at the uh, nail holes that were in my feet. You can touch me for yourself. And you'll see that I'm, I am real. I am not a ghost. Hallelujah. And he said for a spirit, what we call a ghost, he said a spirit does not have flesh and blood like you see me, flesh and bone. In other words, I am in living flesh and bones standing right before you. A spirit don't have flesh and bones. So then after he had just spoken that, he showed them his hands and he showed them his feet. Remember, he was nailed to the cross with the nails going through his hand and nails into his feet. So he showed them living proof of the wounds that he suffered on the cross before his death. And now he has been resurrected to die no more. And now they are actually looking at him in living flesh. And it says, while they yet believe not for joy, they didn't, it wasn't they were sitting there and didn't believe. No, well, I don't believe this. But they were so overjoyed that it was like beyond belief. It was incredible. You mean uh, that we have gotten this good news? This is, I mean, we thought he was dead and gone, but he has come back alive and standing right in front of us talking to us. So they were so full of joy that they still like couldn't quite grasp it. And so Jesus, in order to remove any doubt, to show that he indeed was the living Jesus in front of them, he asked them a simple question. Do you have any meat? You got any food? Y'all got anything to eat? Now, ghost of uh, spirit wouldn't ask you, do you have anything to eat? Because a spirit doesn't eat tangible food like we do. But here is Jesus asking the disciples, have you any meat here? And so they gave him a piece of meat and a broiled fish, a piece of broiled fish that they had broiled and a piece of honeycomb. Amen. So they had bread and meat. And when they gave it to him, the Bible says in verse 43, he took it and did eat before them. He didn't take it and then go outside or go in another room away from them. He sat there and he ate in front of them so that they could know without a shadow of a doubt there will be no doubt, no questions in their mind because they were about to be given a very, very important mission, and that is to evangelize the world. And in order for them to evangelize and tell other people about the risen Christ, they had to know for themselves without a shadow of doubt that Jesus did rise from the dead. That's what resurrection is. So Jesus takes the fish and the honeycomb and he eats it. And then he began to sit down and talk to them and explain what is happening. And he said, these are the words that I spake unto you while I was yet with you. In other words, let me refresh your memory. Do you remember before I was crucified and when we would come together and I would talk to my followers, I would tell you that I am going to be crucified, but that's not the end of the story because I, after three days, I am going to rise again with all power in my hand, all power over death, all power over the grave because you need that power in order for you to believe and to be saved. So he said, now all of these things, even from the time of Moses, the law of Moses, all that the prophets talked about, amen, and in the Psalms, 
All of that in the Old Testament was a prediction of Jesus. What he came to do, uh, how he was going to die, and in fact that he was going to rise again because his flesh was not going to see corruption. He was not going to stay in that grave so long uh, as bodies do today that it start decomposing. God kept his word and through the resurrected Jesus. And today we can praise God. We can glorify God. We can tell about the risen Savior and have Bible proof and know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus did in fact rise from the dead that you and I might have power to live this new life that comes from Christ. And so then as he remade that statement, the Bible said, then he opened their understanding, reminding them what the prophets talked about me. Uh, Moses, the prophet, Moses, the prophet, they talked about I was coming. Uh, the law and the prophet, even in the, uh, the book of the Psalms, all of those pointed to my coming, my resurrection power, and my power to save those who are lost. So he says, thus it is written, and thus it behooves Christ to suffer and to rise again the third day from the dead. In other words, he began, Jesus began to explain to his disciples, it was necessary, it was a must that I die because there was no other perfect sacrifice who had no sin besides Jesus. He was our perfect lamb. So he said, it behooved, it was a must that I die and rise again because if Jesus had not risen, then our hope would be in vain. If Jesus had not risen from the dead, we of all people would be lost and have no hope. So he said, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. So Jesus is teaching and explaining the events that have happened, his death, his burial, and his resurrection, and the impact it had on the rest of the world. So he told his disciples, you are going to go out. I'm going to send you out to evangelize the world, a dying sinful world, and let them know that I am Jesus who has come to save his people from their sin. So he said uh, repentance and the remission of sin should be preached in his name, beginning at Jerusalem. So this was all part of God's plan. They did not catch Jesus by surprise. They did not uh, kill him because he had no power. But this was part of God's plan so that you and I could be saved and have eternal life because it was by his blood that he shed the sacrificial blood that we today have access to the Heavenly Father. Amen. So he told him, now, I want you to go out since you know now that I am real and that this is the truth and that I am alive. He said, now you go out and you teach the world. Starting right here in Jerusalem. Tell the world about me. Tell them that I am alive forevermore and because I live you have power to walk right. You have power to lay down your sins. And he said now, talking to uh, the disciples, he said now, you are witnesses of all these things. In other words, you heard me. You saw me hanging on the cross. You saw them bury me in the tomb. And you saw my, that, that I was no longer in the tomb. And right now, I'm standing right in front of you alive, so you are witnesses. On my board here, I have a list 
of people in the Bible. But right here, and now we're focusing on one of these events today. This is when, and from the 24th chapter of Luke, where Jesus is meeting with the disciples after his resurrection. And he's explaining why all of this happened. And he said, now behold, I'm going to send the promise of my Father upon you. We're talking, referring to the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the living God. He said, now I'm going to send it upon you. But before I do, I need you to do something. He said, tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. In other words, stay right here. Don't go anywhere. Don't go back to your home. Don't go leave out of town. Stay here in Jerusalem. That's what the word tarry means, to wait. So he said, I want you to wait here in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. In other words, I have a job for you to do, but right now you cannot do it. You have to wait till you get the power because you're going to be uh, uh, dealing with demons and devils, sick people, uh, people who don't believe you. So you will need some power to cast out Satan. You will need power to heal the sick just like I am doing because I am sending you out in my name. And then when he explained that to them, he led them out as far as Bethany. And he lifted up his hands and he blessed him. He was getting ready to ascend back to the Father on high after he had walked down on this earth and been seen of several groups of people uh, after his resurrection. So we have living Bible witnesses that Jesus rose because they saw him. It was not a ghost. It was not a story somebody read. He And it came to pass while he blessed them that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. He blessed them and as he blessed them, he was carried up into heaven and they worship him and return to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. So in our lesson today, we see the Bible proof that Jesus did rise. All of these people, the Bible says, seeing that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, starting with Mary and the other Marys that went to the tomb. Amen. Peter in Jerusalem, Luke 24, 34. Uh, he was seen by the 11 disciples in, chapter, in this very chapter we're studying now, chapter 24. Then he was seen by at one time by 10 of his disciples. Thomas was not there. But then Thomas showed up a little while later and he saw him. So all 11 disciples saw him. Then there were seven disciples in Galilee, on the Lake of Galilee. They saw him in the book of John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. And then the 11 disciples on the mountain were given the great commission to go into all the world. And that was in Matthew 28, 16. Now, all of this is after he has resurrected, after he has risen. Then the Bible also, 1 Corinthians says, at one time, he was seen by more than 500 people at once. So we cannot say he did not rise. Too many people saw him. James, who is Jesus' own brother, in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 7, saw him. Then the 11 disciples, they saw him descend, uh, ascend back up into heaven, Mark 16. And Paul, again, we know the story on the Damascus Road in Acts chapter 9. He met Jesus on the road to Damascus. So all of these are the disciples and followers of Jesus who saw him after his resurrection to give us irrefutable proof that Jesus rose from the dead just like the prophets, just like all of these people said he did because they were eyewitnesses. They saw him. Amen. All of these people saw him. Matthias, uh, the reason we have 11 disciples, because remember, uh, Judas was one of the disciples originally, but he was the one that sold out, sold Jesus out, 
that led to him being captured by the Roman soldiers and eventually put to death. And they had to replace uh, Judas with an, another apostle. And this is in the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 26. And Matthias is the one that replaced Judas. So all because he was an eyewitness and it's my understanding that that was one of the uh, requests that they had to be an eyewitness, had seen the Lord and Matthias feel that uh, request. And because he had seen the Lord, so Matthias replaced Judas, who we know the story, had gone out and committed suicide because he gave the Lord away. So let us hold on to the truth, no matter what the world is doing, no matter what people say, no matter who comes and who goes, we know that Jesus did rise because he rose in me. I have, was saved. You, you got the Holy Ghost. You believed on the Lord. He made a change in your life. So Jesus is alive. He's well. He will die no more. He lives forevermore. And if you and I believe in the Bible, say he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water, and we shall see him if we believe and obey. Amen. We want you to uh, continue to follow with us now the resurrected Jesus. And we talked about um, now his ministry and what he means to us. Next Sunday, we are going to be discussing the bread of life. One of the roles Jesus plays in our life, the bread of life, coming from St. John chapter 6, verses 22 through 35. St. John 6, 22 through 35. Won't you pull up a chair and join us next week? We enjoy having you, the Great Atlanta Healing Temple, and if we've been a blessing, won't you bless us through your generous giving? Greater Atlanta Healing Temple, Post Office Box 490274, Atlanta, Georgia, 30349. Again, this is Pastor Smith praying God's blessings of peace, protection, and prosperity and blessings upon you. Thank God for you in Jesus' name.